Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. We are proud to be official media partners of Dive In Festival 2019 this year, which is really cool. And we're doing a series of podcasts for the festival. And if you don't know, uh, the F- Dive In Festival is a global movement in the insurance sector, which is supporting the development of inclusive work place cultures so really really cool work they're in their fifth year they're in about 33 countries now so they do these really cool um, events panel discussions uh, all over the world really helping to promote diversity and inclusion which is very cool so for our first episode in the series for dive in we get to speak to the amazing jason groves who is the director of communications international and head of marketing for marsh in the uk and ireland and is the chair of the steering committee for dive in festival so we speak about his journey from australia to the uk uh, why he enjoys working in insurance in london and we speak about the key themes for this year's dive in some of the events and some key topics this episode of the podcast is supported by bentley lewis an award-winning executive search firm hope you enjoy it hey it's lewis welcome to the podcast enjoy our conversations anytime anywhere Awesome, and we're live. Jason, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Lewis. Good to be here. Pleasure, pleasure. I think we first met like three months ago. Uh, talking about all things diversity and inclusion in the insurance industry, yeah. and um, uh, and here we are on launch day for the Dive In Festival, and you're going to be part of it, which is really it's exciting. perfect. No, really exciting. Thank you very much for getting me involved. So, what is your story? Twenty one years ago, I came to London from Sydney, um, uh, about to embark on a corporate career, but realizing I'd never seen the world and had spent a lot of time involved in politics in oh. Australia. Uh, And it was uh, at a time when Cool Britannia was coming in, the uh, economy was doing quite well. Uh, It was an exciting time to be in London in the late 90s. And um, And so you worked in politics in Australia? My background was in politics um, uh, all the way through university. um, And in the uh, first years after that, I sort of worked briefly for the Australian government um, uh, of the time, Uh, learned a lot of campaigning, uh, learned, I guess, the skills of communications in, in what is a pretty brutal environment uh, and and so that was my background and so I came to London really with the idea of seeing Europe seeing the UK um, just to travel and travel gets a bit of life experience I'm thinking I'd go back to Australia but in the back of my mind thinking that if I liked it and found a good career um, then I'd uh, uh, end up staying and uh, quite out of the blue I was at a Islington dinner party bewailing my lack of employment <laughs> uh, as a young Australian in London and someone said um, well, I've just left the Financial Times to uh, to start a new publication in the insurance sector, and I need a deputy editor. Oh wow! Uh, and uh, and uh, almost twenty years ago, that started my career in the insurance industry, and I've never left. And wow. I, I've grown absolutely, absolutely love the amazing London insurance market. Yeah. So you were writing, and I, I did a lot of writing at university. Yeah. Um, I was halfway through a postgraduate a degree in applied finance, and so that was a sort of background that led me into financial journalism and you know I ended up specializing in reinsurance for about six seven years and edited one of the uh, main reinsurance magazines in London and that got me to meet um, CEOs from all over the world but of course be involved in all the many issues that the reinsurance reinsurance industry is involved in which is basically every big thing that goes wrong Um, reinsurance is there helping to pay to pay out and it's a it's a very little known industry and so exploring that was uh, really fascinating um, but also bringing out some of the insights about how it developed quite rapidly, um, especially in the years after 9-11. Amazing. And how did you find transitioning from, was it Sydney you were living in? Sydney, yes, indeed. Sydney to London. Well, see, like Sydney, Sydney, has a, Sydney has a sort of re- international reputation as a big party city. And of course, people know the Sydney Mardi Gras, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, being all fabulous in sequins. Um, but actually, Australia, um, particularly in the 1980s when I was growing up and early 1990s, was still a very conservative place uh, right. actually and it's something that a lot of people don't see I think when they visit there for a holiday or um, you know watch documentaries about you know kangaroos hopping around the outback or the Great Barrier Reef it, it, it was actually a very conservative society so um, London was in, in, a, in a way much more uh, liberated um, 
uh, and and Sydney was also quite insular, and so it was really exciting to come to what 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 I still think is the most international city in the world, and yeah, yeah. meet people from uh, all over the world who excelled at so many different things. I mean, that's the thing I love about London is that no matter what your you know no matter what your field or profession or your interest, the world's top talent um, either spends time in London or New York at some stage yeah, of their career, yeah, yeah. and meeting people from all different walks of life with all different interests is what it's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I've, I, I was born here. My parents weren't from here. Um, but it's great. I think, like they're saying, 55% of people that live in London aren't from London. And you just get a fantastically diverse mix of people from... Much more so than New York. So I, I work yeah. for an American company. I go to New York quite a lot. Um, I, I, I know the city quite well. But I think London is much more international like that. Um, I, I think you get a, a much better mix of cultures uh, in London and, you know, everywhere you go in London um, as well. How did you find, like, plugging in? actually because it's quite it's a huge city but it could be quite lonely and quite tough to get into i was really lucky social. i i got to know um a large number of people quite quickly through various friends the you know what i worked out about um this country is as soon as you've got some any kind of connection people are very welcoming and the yeah the yeah. foyer sort of drops away and yeah. you can form these friendships very quickly and uh so i i was uh, i was able to do that and i think if you're naturally sort of curious and gregarious um you know london's a great place to sort of meet meet new people but as long as definitely. you get out there and, and do it but, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. and so and so when did you come out publicly so How i came out come publicly about? when i was involved in politics um in australia and in my um part of the i i uh, member of the liberal party which is the center right party in australia um in the part of the party I was involved, I was really the first person to come out. Oh, wow. uh, and so, so you were like early twenties. I uh, no, in my mid twenties, really. Mid twenties, uh, and you know, so I, you know, thinking that I might have wanted a career in politics, I didn't think it was, you know, you could come out and have a career in politics. So I. Uh, rather stupidly spent my entire university years um, still in the closet and it wasn't until I left university that I I came out and you know there were members of parliament um, senior political figures who for whom they said well Jason you're the first gay friend I've ever had in my wow. life um, uh, and which was <laughs> so it was so it was it was, uh, it was received well like um, than mostly not uniformly yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, you know we there was a variety of uh, of reactions most of it very positive of course I played out all the worst possible scenarios in my in my head um, but largely it was a, a, a positive response and you know, I, I never expected to be a sort of rainbow flag waving warrior, but um, <laughs> uh, you know, I was very proud. So I, I'm um, outside my work. I also uh, run the Australian Liberal Party branch in the UK. It was the only part of the Liberal Party that campaigned corporately for a yes vote in the same-sex marriage postal survey oh, right. uh, last year in Australia, which was, of course, successful. So yeah, amazing. Um, so I was, you know, very pleased to be able to do that. But you know, to my knowledge. Um, uh, as president of that, I was the first person when I went into a civil partnership with my partner in 2011. Um, I think I was the first uh, office holder in any Australian political party to enter into a same-sex civil union. Still, still uh, now. 2011. You know, Crazy. so Crazy. Um, so and that's because it's quite conservative and yeah, just, and people people didn't you know move overseas. I, I know a friend of mine who's yeah. now a member of parliament who who married his um, he married his partner in Denmark a couple of years after me. Um, but yes, it was you know it's still within the last ten years. Wow. Um, so things have moved things have moved very quickly. Yeah. Um, and you know I, I think that's the that's the the interesting thing to to look at this whole debate about diversity and inclusion. The way that people's attitudes, um, people's sort of acknowledgement that this is an issue has moved such a long way over over in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, and but so coming to London. Um, must have been very different. Oh, the attitude coming, here is coming to London, I didn't have all the sort of the baggage of, you know, um, people I knew and had grown up with and their parents and all the rest of it. You know, coming to London was a clean slate and, you know, I, I could be myself from the get-go. But, yeah, you know, people, yeah. you, you talk about coming up publicly. You know, if you're, I were, uh, as, as involved in politics as I was, I was never a public figure. Um, uh, so, you know, unless you're a Tom Daly or you're, a, yeah. you know, a, a politician, um, you know, Chris Smith or whoever, you know, you only have to come out once. Um, if you're not a public figure, you know, this is still something faced by so many LGBT people all the time is that, you know, you have to come out every day. I mean, I would say there's almost not a day where I'm not coming out to someone 
you know, or someone talks about, oh, your partner, what does she do? And, right. uh, you yeah. know, making assumptions, you go, and you'll, you always think, you know, oh, I think they'll be okay with this, but, you know, I'm just going to, you know, sometimes you just close your eyes and just sort of your looks, look, try not to look them in the face when you talk about that, you know, partners <laughs> are him. Um, uh, and, and it's, you know, which, uh, you know, it's still in 2019, it's still sort of something that you slightly worry how the people are going to react when you disabuse them of, of, an, assu- of an assumption they've made. Yeah. So, But you uh, find the reactions changed over the time you've been here? People are very polite to your face the entire time. Uh, I mean, that's the wonderful thing about the UK. Right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's only behind your back that they'll, they'll actually say something. But uh, I, my experience is if, if you appear comfortable with it, then they'll appear comfortable with it. Yeah, um, uh, and uh, I've, I've not really had um, uh, many negative experiences um, sort of coming out to people over here. Uh, you know, that said, um, when, I, when I joined the insurance industry, um, slightly different because I, I was, uh, you know, in, by that stage in my mid twenties. But you know, a shocking statistic is that sixty um, percent of young people who are who are out at university, unlike me, um, go back into the closet in their first job. And you know, I still see that when I was um, setting up the Pride Group at Marsh um, uh, two or three years ago. Um, you know, I I spoke to a couple of young people who who said they didn't, you know, they thought they were the only LGBT person in their department. Um, they didn't really want to be that token person and they found it really difficult to come out. So, you know, people ask me, well, why do you need to set up a pride group when we've got equal marriage? Well, actually it's to make, um, it's to make sure that we're attracting top talent into, uh, into our company, into our industry. Uh, and that when they arrive, they feel welcome and they feel they can bring their full selves to work. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that, you know, that work is still important. It's still vital that we, we do that and send that message out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but I found when I, when I came into, uh, when I came into the industry, I was very, yeah, I was very cautious um, about who I decided to come out to um, and not. And, you know, I was always making a judgment or, you know, what would that person think? What they, and then you, of course, have, you have to keep a mental sort of tally about, you know, You've out, not me. out, and, you know, <laughs> or which category are they in? And, um, Were there many to- role models at the time? Uh, in the insurance industry, none. Not many, no. No, none. Um, not even not many. I mean, um, you know, I, I was uh, l- lucky. Pe- people know Damien Gabeel, the former CEO of Lloyd's, and uh, I was the first person to do a profile interview with her. But, you know, um, when I was a journalist, she was she was running a small but incredibly interesting and a highly effective team at a reinsurance company in Germany. Uh, and so I was able to track her career, which has been amazing. Awesome. And uh, I've known Inga so uh, a long time. But, um, you know, she wasn't... A leader of our industry and we didn't have any um, LGBT uh, leaders who certainly who were out and sort of talking about the issue uh, at the time um, you know and we still uh, you know, we still have very very few role models yeah, um, yeah. so this is why I'm happy to sort of um, talk more openly you know as chair of, of dive in um, I think it's important that um, People who are LGBT, and we've, we do have some great role models actually um, in our industry these days. People like um, Jeff Godwin and Angela Darlington. Um, you know, they go out and speak a lot. You know, and in Marsh, um, Samantha Nelson, who's a trans colleague, um, who is a very eloquent spokesperson um, for the trans community in the insurance industry. Um, so, you know, where. Um, uh, you know, we're increasingly doing yeah, that, but yeah. you know, it, it is important that we have that visibility. But certainly, when I came in twenty years ago, there was there was no one to. And is this how Dive In Festival came about? Uh, I think it. You know, um, people like Inga, um, you know, came to Lloyd's and into in particular the Lloyd's market and saw you know looked around and uh, saw a lot of people who looked very similar, who came from very similar backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of whom uh, fathers had uh, yeah. uh, worked worked in insurance as well, and said actually. You know, we are a global market. You know, service servicing clients from almost every country in the world, um, and yet we look incredibly, incredibly alike and very homogenous. And that's you know, that's not um, that's not the way you have fresh ide- bring fresh ideas. You know, at a time Absolutely. when we are facing um, competition from all over the world, from the lights of Singapore and uh, Bermuda and the US and Dubai and you know, lots of other you know Tokyo, lots of other places that want to write more insurance. Uh, actually, London needs to be more innovative than ever, and to do that, we need to have a diversity of um, d- diversity of life experience, a, d- a diversity uh, of talent. Um, we need to have people from all over the world. We need to look a little bit more like our international client base, yes. uh, and to bring those bring those ideas in. It's not just about being tokens. You know, for me, 
um, you know, diverse, you know, greater diversity and inclusive workforce is the fundamental building blocks of making your organization more successful. It's all about the bottom line. This is not just you know, a, a nice, isn't, wouldn't it be nice if we were nice to everyone? This is about being a more successful company. And, you know, that's been a big part of the message of Divin. So Divin was really born to uh, uh, promote <coughs> greater greater diversity raise the issue raise awareness of the fact that we weren't a very um diverse sector I, it didn't take a lot to, to realize that by the way you just said literally <laughs> look, around, you know, the, uh, look yeah. around you and it was like oh yeah actually there's a point but um it was that this is an issue that needs to be addressed and then uh, you know in our second year we made the business case uh, and what was really um amazing it was something that was born out of a london market uh discussion was uh, taken up I mean, people sort of saw this around the world so initially in our first year um, you know Inga came to me and, and, and first year was was in London it was Just first year was yeah, London yeah. 2015 yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and Inga came to me and said look uh, uh, you know I've set, just set up inclusion at Lloyd's as a committee we want to hold a, events over three days um, we want to give it a name and help promote it and get people to come along to some of these events. And so I draw in some communications people from across uh, the insurance industry. We came up with the name of Dive In. Um, we gave it a uh, we gave it a, a narrative about why we were doing it. Uh, and uh, you know, over those three days in September 2015, we held about a dozen events, and you know, 1,800 people turned up. Amazing! And Amazing. it was just wow. This, this people really get this. You know, and of course, it was a lot of people who who already got the need. They to were do into something. it anyway. Yeah. 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 So we we sort of said in sec in our second year, we really wanted to get that message out to a wider audience, and so we we did a lot to try and bring people in who'd never heard the message before. And you know, it, it's difficult not to see it, by the way, because if you walk around the insurance market during dive in week, you know there are signs and posters I mean, it's almost impossible yeah, not to yeah. not to see dive in we've got a very big and it's a very visual um if you look on divinfestival.com nice yeah, yeah divinfestival.com <laughs> you'll see all the colors and uh, it's very visual very bright um and and hard to miss uh, which was quite deliberate but so in the second year we really deliberately tried to get some of the people who'd not heard the message before and we brought people in people like ben cohen who um of course was a great yeah. rugby star for england uh, but set up a charity when he realized that he was very popular among uh, a certain uh, in the gay community um realized that uh you know lgbt bullying was um you know really quite a terrible thing and he could do something about it and his um stand up foundation has yeah. has done amazing work to stop bullying so we got him to come along and speak in the second year and i remember sitting next to inga in this uh, auditorium we had about 300 people and we looked around and and I can guarantee you that no one in that audience had ever been to a diversity and inclusion <laughs> talk before. And of course, they came along to hear Ben Cohen, the rugby star, yeah. but they came away thinking, wow, you know, actually, gosh, I'd never thought about it like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that's what we want to do is get people to think again, actually, you know, maybe I should be doing something about this and taking those practical steps back to their organizations. But so at the same yes. time as we were growing in London, more people in London wanted to come. We have people around the world, so people in Sydney and in Singapore and in New York. So, wow, this looks amazing. We'd really love to do something in our own cities. Um, and so in the second year, we went from just being London to uh, the whole um, the whole insurance market in the UK, uh, uh, you know, and, so events, and events outside of London, events outside of London, right. um, but also in other countries. So we had we were seven. We grew from just one country to, to I think, seven countries in year two, Amazing. which was, was which was pretty ambitious. But we, we did it um, and just funded by the sponsors and, and just funded by by a, a group of really um, forward thinking companies yeah. that saw the need to to get this done. Um, but this year, um, you know, so. Uh, very proud to announce today that we'll be in 33 countries. Wow, 33. Um, um, hopefully. Um, Every continent? Uh, bar Antarctica, yes. <laughs> uh, um, um, and and just shy of 70 cities um, wow. as well. Uh, you know, and, and I expect... And does your committee organise... Uh, well, we, there are committees all over the world, so Great. this is very yeah. decentral. We, 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 set the, um, we set the agenda, so it's very much um, on focusing on impact this yeah. year so you know what is the impact in your business uh you know there have been a lot of stories in the press recently talking about sexual harassment um you know and for london that's clearly going to be a focus but you know in different countries there will be different focuses they'll be on different um different stages of the journey towards okay. greater diversity and inclusion but you know last year we had an event in riyadh saudi arabia um you know it was amazing i was seeing photos of 40 50 women being told 
you know, you too can be leaders of the insurance industry in Saudi Arabia. And you've got to think a lot of the well, a lot of women had never heard that message yeah. before. So, you know, Divin is doing great things like that. And we're, we've added all sorts of really fantastic countries this year, like Nigeria, um, Bahrain, um, Indonesia, Oman, Turkey. Um, uh, you know, we'll all be having um, events talking about diversity and inclusion in the insurance sector. So, you know, that's um, that's uh, hugely, hugely exciting that that message is getting out there and really empowering people to make a difference. You know, um, we, we get a lot of interest uh, coming each year. So love it. Yeah. And do you have um, like some main key themes this year? Like how does it? How would it work? Uh, well, so the, the theme that we ask everyone to, uh, I mean, the we ask everyone to think about is that is that impact within their organization okay, yeah. you know, how how can we you know what can you, what are you doing to cha- you know to act actively change the the stats it's not just oh that was nice and yeah. go away and do nothing it's it's okay well, what are the concrete changes that you're going to make and a lot of our sessions will be about practical advice um, things for people to think about that you know not just for senior management or people in hr but you know within your own teams yeah. you know yeah. what can you do uh to, to to make um the workplace more welcoming and more inclusive so you know if you come you know if you work in a small team uh of you know say four or five people you know what can you do if someone comes in with a slightly different life experience to make them feel to make them feel more welcome and included you know um, and actually just just thinking about uh yeah. you know what 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 that's like if you're you know if your father didn't work in insurance and you're not sort of straight white and middle class yeah. um uh, and you know but all around the world we're sort of thinking about that and of course um in in some countries that will be a, a greater focus on one part of diversity than than another um but you know people will look at okay what you know what's the burning issue in our particular country yeah. uh, and they'll um, organize um, either one event or multiple events to address address those issues great and then in london we have so it's like panel discussions speakers uh, have a okay. whole range of uh, uh, events in london um uh, yeah a lot of panel discussions talking about so we, we won't sort of talk about sort of one particular issue what we'll, we'll try and sort of come out at a, a slightly different angle or you know look at two or three aspects of diversity all together um and a lot of them will just be about you know um inclusive workplace you know raising issues that are topical yeah. um at the moment um, but something that, you know, really speaks to people. So, you know, I think there really is something for everyone there. So, you know, one aspect of it is is parents and carers. Um, you know, if you're a carer, uh, you know, primary carer for someone, a member of your family, you know, that raises, you know, you've got a very, you know, different and difficult life outside work. You know, do you talk about that at work? And maybe you don't. And, and yeah. actually, it's important sometimes to, so people sort of understand that. And, you know, actually, you know, being in a situation like that, you know, gives you a different perspective which is very helpful within Definitely. an organization how do you think how do you think we're doing in london overall I, compared you know, to I, these I, other you know the 33 countries that, that the events are going on are we are we in good shape are we i, I think we still have a we still have a long way to go um you know as as news uh, in in 2019 has has shown but um you know i th- if i look back when dive in started uh, and people's attitudes you know um a lot of people welcomed it, but a lot of people didn't, you know, what's all this PC nonsense? And, know. Uh, you know, and there was, uh, I know because I witnessed <laughs> uh, and experienced some of it myself, you know, outright hostility to really? um, by some people in the market. And I, you just don't see that now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think every, you know, and, and some companies thought that this was just sort of like a, you know, um, PC kind of stuff and they didn't have to worry about. And actually, I th- I've not come across a single company that doesn't realize actually we do need to do something about this we're not as diverse we're probably missing out on different ideas by not by not having a more inclusive culture um you know how how do we go about doing this you know what 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 are some of the things that we we need to do and uh, you you know and if people do have views that are negative i think they know to leave them on the train um you don't you don't bring them up to um you you know to to work whereas once upon a time you you would have done um uh uh, but you know does that say that we've you know we've we've won the war well i think that's very clearly not the case um but i do think we've made some good progress and i think dive in has been um absolutely invaluable and in- instrumental in in leading that yeah. you know I, I think really um you know it, it ha- there are, i mean what is extraordinary about dive in is that to my knowledge there's no other industry in any field let alone financial professional services where you have all the major players 
in that one industry coming together to talk about every aspect of diversity and inclusion and saying to their colleagues, well, feel free to go to all these events. Uh, that, that doesn't happen anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And so insurance actually should should give itself a little pat on the back. Yeah, I uh, think, I mean, it feels like, I mean, I've been, I've been working in the, in the industry as a headhunter for 15 years and it, I mean, for me it feels, and maybe I'm a bit too optimistic, um, but it feels, it feels good. I mean, there's a lot of, as I said, like most people here aren't from the UK. It feels much more inclusive and, and diverse and, than it did when I first started. Look, I think in a, in a lot of companies, particularly bigger companies, yeah. you, you, you're, you're going to see that um, quite obviously. But I think in some of the mid-sized or smaller companies, um, you know, if you're, dif- if you're different, you stick out. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think what we, what we need to do is, is make sure that when, you know, that's a good thing when people come into those firms that actually they, you know, or, or into smaller teams within big firms. Uh, that, that that they feel that they naturally fit in and that their yeah, yeah. their difference is welcomed and valued. Um, that's that's where we need to get to. And yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, as I said, I think we've made a lot of good progress towards that. Awesome. How can people attend? Find out about it. Well, we have a fantastic and newly revamped website, uh, nice. DiveInFestival.com. dot com. Um, we've got an app that you can download um, from the Apple Store um, onto your phone, or also onto Android. There's a uh, Android app as well, um, and you can register for events um, on the app, and it will give you lots of information uh, about that. Uh, it's very user friendly, and we'll be doing polls on that as well. So all sorts awesome. of things that you can. And find that's on all the being released today, and all being coming out today for yep. this year's festival. And then you've got Twitter. Instagram, I think as well. Uh, we do. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, we have. And LinkedIn. Um, uh, and Instagram, absolutely. Uh, pro- proving very popular. And do follow us on Twitter. And um, we have a regular uh, regular feed of um, articles that sort of tell you about, you know, what are the current, what are people talking about in areas of diversity and inclusion. And uh, it's a very good Twitter feed. I awesome. Know, I might say. And we're going to be doing a few more podcasts with other people as well, which should be really interesting. Yeah. And, and you know, and um, we've got some really interesting speakers, you know, um, uh, who, uh, you know, people like Frank Bruno um, coming along to oh, amazing. to this amazing. year's festival. So, right. um, what's he uh, going to be? Uh, probably like, uh, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll be yeah. a surprise. Yeah, we'll exactly, surprise. exactly. Visit. I, I, I don't want to give everything away. Visit no, the no, website. Yeah, yeah, visit the website. Check out the events, and yeah, really looking forward to it. It'll be really cool. Love you to speak to you. Great, thanks, Lewis. Great to speak to you. Pleasure, and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. 